I'm going to place my image on a new slide. So making sure the Home tab is selected, I'll click on New Slide. And again, choose Title and Content. And where it says Click to Add Text, I'm actually going to go down to the Picture icon, Insert Picture from File. I'm going to locate the image, which is on my desktop. Click on it and press Insert. The picture appears centered on the slide directly beneath the title box. And at this point, I'm going to click on the image to select it so that I can resize it a bit. And you'll notice the handles that appear around it. Here's a resizing trick. If you hold down the Control and Shift keys together, when you resize, it will stretch or shrink in all directions at the same time proportionally. So I'm going to position my mouse pointer on a corner handle. You'll notice it looks like a two-sided arrow. And I'm going to move diagonally inward to shrink it down a little bit. And then I let go of my mouse pointer. If I want to move it up but keep it centered, I can hold down the Shift key while I position my mouse pointer inside the image. Click and move it up. And this way it will stay centered. The shift key keeps it from moving to the left or right. The same goes if you want to move it horizontally without shifting it vertically at the same time. Simply hold down the shift key as you drag the image. When resizing a photo, please remember always to click on a corner handle and not an interior handle. If you click on an interior handle and stretch or shrink it, you'll distort the proportions of the image. I'm going to click Undo. Always use a corner handle to click on and drag, and your image will retain its proportions. Now, if for any reason your picture becomes off-centered and you'd like to align it back to the center, that's easy to do. As long as the image is selected, that is, if it has the handles around it, you can go up to this contextual menu that says Format under Picture Tools and then go to the Align option and choose Align Center. And your image is now centered again. The Picture Styles Gallery, also in the Format menu, provides framing options for your photos and images. Select the image if it's not already selected and then click on the Format tab and notice the Picture Styles group. Hover your mouse over the various thumbnails to preview them and see what they look like. You may scroll by clicking on the down arrow to preview other options, or you may click on the arrow with the line above it to display the entire menu. If you see something you like, simply click on it and that picture frame style is added to your picture. Next, this photo requires attribution. Image databases usually provide most, if not all, of the information required for you to provide a proper citation. For digital images, you'll need to list the author, year of creation, title, date of capture from the website, and the website's URL. I'll bring up the CBC website again, and you'll see that the website lists the photographer, or author in this case, as Amanda Mills, and the creation date as 2011. The website doesn't provide a title for this particular photo, just a description. In this case, I would just enter title unknown. So next, I'll copy the URL of the home page, just the home page will do, and I'm going to press Control C. That's a Windows keyboard shortcut that lets me copy. And I'll go back into PowerPoint and enter this inside of a text box. So my next step is to click on Insert and then select the text box. 
and then click and drag to create my text box. I can begin entering my information. Amanda Mills is the author. Put a period after the author and then the title, which is unknown. And then immediately after the title, in brackets, you want to type online image. Another period, date of retrieval, and then the website. And because I copied it, control C, I will paste it in here by pressing control plus V on the keyboard. Okay. The citation is a little larger than I need it to be, a little obtrusive. So I'm going to highlight the text within and I'm going to go to the decrease font icon and click on that several times. And I'm going to center it by clicking on the center icon. That looks much better. Lastly, I'm going to add a title for this slide. And I'll resave the presentation. The final slide I'm going to create will incorporate video from the web. I'll create a new slide. Being in the Home tab, I'll click on New Slide. And I'm going to choose Title and Content. The Title with Contents slide type allows you to insert saved media clips into your presentation. But given the large size of video files, it's usually more feasible to link to a video from a website rather than attempt to save the video file and then insert it into PowerPoint the way we did an image. So I'll insert an image and then set up the hyperlink to the web page where the video is. First, I'll enter my slide title. Then I'm going to insert a graphic into the slide. You don't need so much to have an image on the slide, but you're going to use that image as a hyperlink to move from the presentation out to a website, as you'll see. Any object on the slide can be used to create a hyperlink, even text. For this exercise, I will use a PowerPoint clip art image. I'll click on the clip art icon to bring up PowerPoint's own clip art gallery. As this is a video slide, I'll search for an image that pertains to film. So in the search for window, I'll enter that as my keyword and press enter. A number of relevant images come up and I can scroll down to see which ones I like best. I can also refine my search in the results should be window. If I click on the down arrow, I can deselect audio and video and then press go again. I like this clip, so to select it, I just click once and it appears on my screen. I'd like to resize it a little bit, so I'm going to position my mouse pointer over one of the corner handles, and if I hold down the control and shift key while I resize, click and drag, it resizes all sides at once and keeps it centered. Next, I'm going to raise it a little bit on the slide. So I'll position my mouse pointer inside the image. My mouse pointer looks like a four-sided arrow. And I'm going to hold down the Shift key and click and drag it up. The Shift key just keeps it centered so that it only goes up and not side to side. Next, I'm going to create a hyperlink using this image. So I'm going to position my mouse inside the image and click on the right mouse button. And from this menu that pops up, I'm going to select hyperlink. And I've already selected a website, so I'm just going to paste in the URL 
that takes me directly to that video clip in the address window and then I'm going to click OK. And last, I'm going to need to give a citation for this video. So I'm going to have to insert a text box. To do that, go to Insert, select the text box, and then position my mouse where I want to begin the text box, and click and drag. And I again will paste in the URL. I'm going to backspace that extra line, and I'm also going to center this. And now I'm going to click outside of the box. Looks good. If this were off-center, meaning I hadn't drawn my box in a centered way, um, you could always click on the boundary box here. The mouse changes to a four-sided arrow, and you'll see a Format tab. Then go to Align and choose Align Center, and that just fine-tunes it so it is dead center. I'm going to close out the clip art pane on the right side in order to make more room for my slide. In the editing screen, you can't actually launch the website. The hyperlink is not active here. In order to launch it, I'll need to go to Slideshow View. So I'm going to go up to the Slideshow tab, and then I'm going to choose from Current Slide. When I glide my mouse anywhere over the image, you'll notice the mouse pointer changes to a hand with a pointing finger, indicating a hyperlink. I'll go ahead and click once on the image to launch the video. You have called the phenomenon of childhood obesity a tsunami. What do you mean by that? Well, the full impact of the childhood obesity epidemic is still a long time in the future. We're really only seeing the tip of the iceberg, or to use another metaphor, uh, a tsunami. Um, when done, I'll just exit out of the browser, and I'm returned to slideshow view in my current slide. At this point, I'll just press Escape to get me back to the editing screen. And then I'll press Save one more time. I'll run through the now completed slide presentation in Slideshow View. So the Slideshow tab is currently selected, and I'll go to From Beginning. I'll use my space bar to advance my slides. You can also click on the mouse or press the down arrow key, whatever works best for you. I'll also use spacebar to advance my bullet points one by one. And when I arrive at the video slide, I can launch the website by hovering my mouse over the image and clicking once. You have called the phenomenon of childhood obesity a tsunami. I exit the browser when done, press spacebar, I get to the black screen where it says end of slideshow, click to exit, press my spacebar key again, and I'm back at the editing screen. Now that I've completed the slide presentation, I'd like to show you the slide sorter feature. It's located under the View tab. The slide sorter allows you to view your slides together as thumbnails and to rearrange their order. Let's switch slides two and three. To do so, I'll position my mouse over slide 2, and I'll click and drag it to the right of slide 3, and you'll notice a thin vertical gray bar. Wherever that bar is when I let go of my mouse, that's where the slide will drop. So now Start in Infancy has become my third slide. 
Next, I'll move the final slide in the presentation to the first position. So I'll click on it, hold down the mouse, and drag it until I see the thin vertical gray line at the beginning of my presentation. Then I'll let go. I'll move it back again by clicking on the slide, holding the mouse down, and dragging it back to the end. To restore single slide view, the easiest way is simply to double click on one of the slides. You could also click Normal from the Presentation Views group in the View tab. I'll just double click on the first slide to restore single slide view. Notice on the left side of the screen the thumbnails of the two bullet lists. They have a little star in motion type of icon next to them, and that indicates that I've applied an animation to them. I'd like to demonstrate another kind of animation, which is slide transitions. I'm going to click on the tab for transitions, and beneath it is a gallery of different transition effects. You can click once to preview each effect. And if you click on the down arrow with the line above it, it displays a full gallery. The ones listed here and here are a little too exciting and dynamic and I think might distract my audience. So I'm going to go with a subtle type of transition. I'm going to choose a wipe. And I'd like to apply that transition to all my slides. Easy to do. I'll just go over here where it says Apply to All and click there. You'll notice that that star in motion icon now appears next to every single slide. I'm then going to go to Slideshow View, click from beginning, and see how I like it. I think that looks very nice, so I'm going to press Save. You can change your slide transition at any point throughout your presentation. As was mentioned early in the tutorial, you can change the color of the slide background and or the text of your presentation yourself using the Slide Master feature. To change the color, you'll first need to click on the Office Theme template from the Design Gallery, which will restore the simple black and white scheme you started out with. So I'll go to Design, and I'm going to select Office Theme. To change the color of the text, I'll need to go to a place called the Slide Master, where I can make global color changes once without having to change the color slide by slide. To do this, I'll go to View, and then I'll select Slide Master. You'll see thumbnails on the left of all the types of slides you can make, title slides, title with content slides, etc. I'll click on the top thumbnail the Office Theme Slide Master. To change the background color, first I'm going to right mouse click on the background, being careful not to click inside a text box. And from the pop-up menu, I'll see Format Background, so I'm going to go there and left mouse click on Format Background and then I get a menu that lets me select a fill option. Solid fill is what I want, and my fill color is currently set to white, so I'll click on the down arrow, and I'll choose 
from one of these options. I can also go to more colors if I want, but I'll try blue. If not, I'll try green. I'll click close and then I'll change the color of my text for my slides. In the Office Theme Slide Master, which covers my title with content slides, I'll click first inside Click to Edit Master Title Style. In that placeholder, I'll then click on the Home tab and I'll go to the Font Color icon, click on the down arrow, and choose a dark green color. Then I'll go to click to edit master text styles and here I'm not just going to click, I'm going to click and highlight everything. I'll go back up to the color icon and choose a slightly lighter shade of green. Now this will cover all of my title with content slides, but for my title slide, the very first slide of my presentation, I need to change the color in the title slide layout master. So I'm going to click on that, which is here. You'll notice that this is turned green, but the subtitle has not changed color. So I'm going to actually click and highlight it. And I'm going to go up here to the color menu and change it to that lighter green. And that's all that I'll need to do here in the Slide Master view. Please, though, do not enter any slide content here in the master slide. Whatever you type on these will appear on every single slide in your presentation. These master slides function kind of like old fashioned carbon paper. So make sure you exit the slide master before entering your slide by slide content. When you're ready to exit this view, look for the slide master tab up top. And then click close master view. PowerPoint will return to the editing screen and you can see how the changes have applied across the presentation. I'm just going to click on the double down arrows so you can see. You'll notice certain things like my text boxes that I created have not changed colors. Those I would have to do individually. I'm going to go ahead and save this presentation and I'm going to click on the first slide. Next, I'll show you the notes feature in PowerPoint. Beneath each slide is an area where you can click to add notes. This area is useful for organizing the spoken content of your presentation. All you do is click inside the area that says click to add notes and begin typing things that you'll want to remember to say at your presentation. And then you can advance slide by slide, clicking and adding text for all slides. If you need more room, you can click on this boundary line here so your mouse turns into a double-sided arrow. Hold down the mouse and drag it up. You'll have more room for your typing. PowerPoint can then print the notes for each slide out with the slide. The notes will appear on the bottom half of the page beneath a reduced size image of the slide to which the notes refer. Let's go to the print menu to see a preview of this. So click on file and then print. And where you see full page slides, click on the down arrow and select notes pages and I'll scroll up to the first slide and you can see the notes I typed for myself. One last thing I'd like to mention 
is also found here in the print menu. Perhaps you've gone to presentations where the speaker has provided audience handouts of his or her slides. These handouts include reductions of the slides, which can be printed with two, three, four, six, or even nine slides per page. I'm going to click on the down arrow by where it says Notes Pages to reveal the different handout options you have. And I'll just click on three slides to let you know that if you choose that, your audience will have room to take notes next to the slides. Personally, I prefer two slides per page. It maximizes legibility and saves paper. Or we can go back to the default one slide per page, which is full page slides. I'll click on the Home tab, and we're done. If you have any questions about this presentation or you'd like to set up a consultation for further instruction, please contact me, Katherine Sluder. Thank you for watching and good luck with your presentation.